this old DVD. We are finally at the end. I want to recap with what I've with what um, I want to recap over the whole of the thirty one days, and I wanted to say a couple of things at the end, and then I will say goodbye to you for this time. I do want to stress that I will be doing another thirty one days of BPD this time next year, so please keep an eye out for that. I will be going into more detail, um, I'll go more in depth, and hopefully be really really helpful and beneficial to you guys. So what have we talked about over the past 31 days? Well we've introduced BPD, we've talked about the causes, possible causes, talked about genetics and environment, being born with emotional intensity, being on that scale, which, oh it is here, it is here. <laughs> you know what I'm going to point anyway, so by the time we've got this out you probably don't need it. Yeah so we've talked about being on the scale. Most people are here, we're up here. We've then gone through the nine signs and symptoms taken from the DSM-4. So we've talked about abandonment. Stay there, book. We've talked about abandonment. We've talked about unstable, intense relationships. We've talked about unstable self-image with our identity disturbance. We've talked about impulsivity, behaviour, Sorry, suicidal behaviour and self-harm, <laughs> instability of moods, chronic feelings of emptiness, inappropriate anger and paranoid ideation. So all those nine, the nine videos of the nine signs and symptoms, I really hope that you can now watch those and be like, right, I understand a bit more about what that's saying. You know, there's a lot of the speak, a lot of the dialect used, a lot of the words used in these things it can sometimes be really you know, medical words, not, you know, a bit jargonish. So I'm hoping that those nine videos will give you a better understanding of those nine signs and symptoms. We then talked about the negative effects of living with BPD, you know, the costs to, you know, your friends, your family, my, you know, I'll say again, my career, I lost my career because of my, my illness. And we just talked about triggers. Hopefully, some of you, this will be, you know, sorry, I say I'm hopefully too much. I'm hopeful <laughs> that the uh, understanding triggers has been really interesting measuring your emotions so talking about the one to five one and one and two being quite stable four and five being off the charts and remember i'm coming back to our little blue pot nice firmly on or level one or two and then poof, off the lid comes hopefully those analogies you have found of interest as well and then we talked about managing an episode. So we've learned how to distance, communicate, challenge, distract, and manage problem. Then done some really cool, well, hopefully will be useful to you, some work that you can be getting on with yourself. So how to manage your problem, you know, from your five steps of the episode, setting goals and taking care of yourself. So making sure that you're avoiding any of those abusive behaviors. We then had some time with the carers which I hope has been useful for them as well. And then finally, yesterday we talked about therapies and medication. We've covered a lot over these 31 days. A lot's happened in these 31 days. My hard drive breaking and having to re-record over half the videos again. <sighs> yeah. And what this video is actually titled Being Okay With BPD. And I wanna say that you can live with BPD. It is hard, it is hard for um, for you on many levels, it's hard for the people around you, but you can live with it. Remember our scale, remember our scale of intensity when we're, when we're up here. Sometimes if we're at level one or two, three maybe, of happy, we're way more happy than other these other people. As long as we don't get into a dangerous hypermanic state, it's good to feel happier than most. It's good to feel elation. It's good to feel excitement. It's good to feel sometimes it's 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 sorry, it's good to have these feelings. Sometimes you wanna sometimes you you know get fed up with them and bogged down with them and they're too intense and things like that. But it's great to feel, right? It's great to have empathy sometimes. It's great to have the ability to to feel that deeply some people don't feel at all and some people you know don't have a, they're not very sensitive and they can be quite tough and and things like that we're, we're quite sensitive people and there's nothing wrong with that 
absolutely nothing wrong with that. It's so one thing I did say um, at the beginning of this series, I said something about feeling like a child in an adult's world. I don't want to take credit for that quote because it actually came from the Mind website and I think it was one of the first quotes that I read from someone who had BPD when I was first diagnosed and it really resonated with me which is why I brought it back to that beginning. Sometimes having BPD you do feel like a child, you are unable to regulate your emotions just like a toddler and even sometimes like a teenager. So you're stuck between being a toddler and a teenager sometimes so it's quite hard to live with. <clears throat> Um, oh yeah, the, well, another thing that I forgot to talk about was BPD and the brain. And there's a really cool thing that, well, it, it's, it's cool as far as it, it's, 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 it's a useful thing to know, but it's really kind of like, oh, really eye-opening for me, that people with BPD view faces, view facial expressions of other people very differently. Now, what happens is, when you're viewing a face, most people use just the normal... The, sorry, the side of their brain that just picks up on, that it's a face. They're not looking for detail. When you start to look at detail in a face, you use a different part of your brain. I think it's the left side, but I'm, I, someone correct me if that is incorrect. What happens with BPD is you actually look at faces in more detail than other people. So when you're looking at that detail, you're seeing, if someone's doing that, maybe they're confused, but you see a frown, you see anger, you see deep furrows, because I need Botox. No, I don't, know, But, um, you know, you see this kind of like, that's, you know, and if I look at someone and they're looking like that, I think, oh, what have I done, you know? But that's something I forgot to say, I wanted to put it in, that, you know, we, people with BPD, we see things differently. We do see things differently. We have an overactive amygdala, which makes us not able to regulate our emotions. So give yourself credit. Give yourself credit for every time you manage to distance. And every time you manage to do the rest of those steps, communicate, challenge, distract, manage problem, how quickly can you say it? Every time you do something like that, give yourself credit. I'm now going to end by saying I'm delighted that I have a new set of friends, BPD friends, you guys. To everyone who's watched this series, to everyone who's liked, subscribed, to anyone who's shared it, anyone that's been involved or engaged with this at all, thank you so much. You are my new BPD friends and coupled with my existing BPD friends. Thank you everyone for making this journey really, really exciting, really, really fun. And I hope that what I've talked and what I've shared with you guys has been amazing. And I'm not gonna get upset because I'm not going to do that. Um, but thank you for everything. Thanks for watching. Please, please like and subscribe if you haven't already. See you next time. Take care now.